<laughs> Hello again, my lovelies. Pirate Scum Gaming here, and tonight I am bringing you my take on a beam overload build for the Terran Lexington Dreadnought Cruiser. This is a this is a nimble, heavy hitting, and very powerful ship. It's also extremely well designed. I love the way it looks. And right now I have it decked out in a mix of old school Terran and new school Terran colors. Because you know, you gotta represent the old school. And before we get into the actual review, um, let me explain the name. Uh, no, your eyes do not deceive you. It is the ISS Death by Stu Stu. Now, the reason this ship is named that is because, we, as we all know, our favorite top hat wearing content creator, Stu1701, he loves his Odysseys. If the Odyssey was a woman, he'd marry it. Even if the Odyssey wasn't a woman, he'd probably marry it. Yeah, we love you, Stu. And when this ship came out, it is a Odyssey with a top hat. And Stu just fell in love with this ship, as did all of us content creators. It's a, it, it's a very uniquely designed ship. So I could not help myself, I just had to name it Death by Stu Stu. And for all you wondering, that is a Futurama reference. Go look it up, kids. Alright, so as promised, let's get into this review now that I've uh, given a brief, brief explanation to the name. Okay, first off, we have the Terran Task Force Phaser Dual Heavy Cannons. And the reason we're using this is it's 200% executability with targets at 25% hull or lower. And these hit very hard. You're going to see that in the parse explanation coming up. Next up is the Phaser Wide Angle Dual Heavy Beam Bank. This is also a very heavy hitting under beam overload. This comes from a Discovery Reputation, by the way, if you didn't already know that. Which I'm pretty sure you do if you've all watched any of my videos. I've talked about this thing time and time again. And it is part of the Lorca's Ambition 3-piece, which I will be going over when I start talking about consoles. Next up, I have an Agni Phaser Dual Beam Bank. Uh, this does place a dot on the target, which has a chance to disable. And it also hits very, very hard. Now, Augie loves these. And me, personally, I like pulse phasers. I think they look they look cool under beam overload. However, with the couple of parses I ran with this ship, with those, it just weren't performing up to par. So I swapped in the Agni Duel, the Agni phasers, and I was not disappointed. I got a much, much better result. Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. You've heard me talk about this ad infinitum. This is a very heavy hitting uh, torpedo. It's a great all purpose torpedo, whether you're in a science ship or you know a torque boat or even a beam boat. Uh, it's dark matter dissolution is quite powerful. It's uh, what happens when the um, enemy disintegrates into a purple poof cloud. Also, this torpedo actually plays very, very well with chemocyte. Because who doesn't love radiation explosions? I, I know I do. War crimes, you know. I'm a Terran, what do you expect? And the Space Core, not chained, same things I always run. The Elite Fleet Intervention Protomatter Deflector Array from your colony. The Competitive Engine from your Competitive Reputation. This is the Tactical Variant. The other two, uh, they just don't work as well. Your Elite Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core from your Spire Fleet Holding. We are using this because of the 66% 66, 66 power transfer rate. And that is basically, it helps get your power levels back to their uh, correct power setting after coming out of full impulse. And it also has a minus 10% weapon power cost, which is helpful for beam overload, because we all know that beam overload uh, drains power, weapon power a lot more than just standard firing modes. So you need to get that. So you need to reduce your weapon power cost, so you keep your weapon power maxed out as much as possible. 
Next up we have Tilly's Review Pending Modified Shield. This is, all, this is also from the uh, Discovery Reputation. And the reason you're using this is because your weapon attacks cause enemy shields to receive 11.5% increased damage for 10 seconds based on shield power. Now my, you can see on my power levels down there, my shield power is not very much because shields don't mean very much in this game. But even at that low level, I'm still getting a decent boost to uh, shield damage. After weapons, we are running the Trilithium Enhanced Omnidirectional Phaser. This comes from the Beyond the Nexus mission. It is a freebie. It is one of the best phaser freebies in the game. I'm also using uh, the turret that comes from that mission. For Now, these two do not stack, but they each have a chance to give you... <coughs> excuse me. Give you 10% chance to... A 2.5% chance, pardon me. 2.5% chance to gain 10% firing cycle haste for energy weapons. Because, you know, I've talked about this before. You know, how, who knows how many times, because you've seen I've done a lot of beam overload builds. When, be when you activate beam overload, your firing cycle slows. So we need to buff your firing speed to get it back up to uh, normal firing modes. So that's why we are using as many of these haste consoles as possible. Next up is uh, Agony Omni. I already talked about Agony, you know what it does. I'm also using the Kinetic Cutting Beam. This is technically an Omni, but it isn't. Uh, we are using this in conjunction with the simulated module for the minus 500% weapon power cost, which how you get anything over 100% is beyond me, but, you know, logic. Logic I don't want to try to get into because it's just giving me a nosebleed. But anyway, this does not this is not affected by any firing modes. It's just there to cause kinetic damage and act as another quote unquote omni. Alright, I've talked about this already. And this uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the turret here as well as the cannon when I come to my bridge officer powers. For devices, I have my energy amplifier from level 15 level 15 of your not to get back level 10 of your beam R&D reactive armor catalyst this comes from the broken circle mission in the Arconian arc basically once you uh, unlock this you can make these make as many of these little wonder pills as much as possible in your engineering R&D these are uh, great oh shit buttons if you're taking damage and you need a quick hull heal or you need to uh, cleanse some Borg, fire, Borg plasma fire from your hull. It does work, work for that. Next up is Deuterium Surplus. Uh, Deuterium Surplus, also known as Evasive in a Can. This comes from a mission patrol, which in order to get that mission patrol, you have to go into... Here, let me show you. Go into your available tab here in your mission journal. Scroll down to the Spectre's Arc, and you're going to want to do the mission Skirmish. This is this mission shouldn't take, shouldn't take you more than 20 25 minutes, real quick, easy. You know, wham, bam, thank you, man, you're done with it. And after that, you're going to go down to the Alhana system, which is just south of Drozana. You are going to run that mission once. It's very easy. You go in, fend off a, uh, a Deuterium surplus depot from some invading Cardassians. You should be able to make quick work of them. And after that, you're going to get your mission reward, as well as pick up some additional deuterium surpluses from the supply depot. And then this will be unlocked in your engineering R&D, and you can make as many of these uh, little things as possible. This was a huge boon to us when the devs, thank you devs, for adding this to the R&D. Because before, you, know, you could only get about five of these a day, and that was just... It's a pain because you had to go to do the mission once a day, and it, it's a mess. But now that you put the, now they put this in the R engineering R and D, you can make as many of these as you want, and not have to. Go, all you have to do is that mission once, and then you could just forget it ever exists. Next up is the Kobayashi Maru transponder from the uh, Kobayashi Maru event some time ago. This just gives you some random uh, buffs, which is very helpful, and. The last one I'm using the red matter capacitor because it buffs power levels. And I want to get 
uh, try to buff up that shield power a little bit going into combat. That way I can buff up, get the higher buff from Tilly's shield. That's why I'm using this, because it buffs some power levels. Consoles. First off, we have the Lorcator, as we all call it. Lorcator's custom fire controls. So let's go talk about that three piece I talked about earlier. Okay, the console alone is very, very good. It basically, it, it's another locator. You get a nice bit of crit chance, now you get a nice bit of weapon power setting, and you also get a massive boost to Starship Shield Pen. Uh, you heard me talk about this before, the quicker you get through the shields, the quicker you're hitting the hull, the quicker you kill the enemy. And let's talk about the, the, the piece there. First, there's the two piece, which is War Discretion, on crit, plus 1% crit severity buff for 20 seconds, stacks up 25 times, so that's basically 25% uh, extra free crit severity. And then you get to three piece, but that's just the beginning. Automatically launch one dark quantum torpedo at enemies below 50% health, max one torpedo per second, no more than one torpedo per enemy. Now, you know, throughout the ISC that I'm going to show you, you're going to see me just, you know, pooping out these torpedoes all over the place. That's what that that's what this comes from. Now, this particular set is very useful in uh, in another TFO. It's actually very useful in Kenmer Vortex because at the final stage when you're fighting off Denatra, you know, these little torpedoes are going to start uh, heading it, you know, shooting at her even when she cloaks. So you can kind of keep track about where she's going. I bet you didn't know that before. You know, I, I kind of discovered that accidentally doing one that, on Augie's stream one night. I noticed that after Denatra cloaked, my quantum torpedoes were just kind of shooting off in one direction. And that's where she happened to be. I'm like, oh, isn't this a nice little bonus? So, yeah, see, you learned something. And that's what I'm here for, to help you learn something. Next up is the Bioneural Fusion Circuits. This is probably one, the best lobby console. It's one of the oldest, and it's one that I am going to use on all my builds. Gives a nice bit of Starship Hull capacity, which is going to feed into a trait that I'm using. Also, some Starship Control expertise, which is handy because I do have a grab wall I'm using. And I am also a nice bit of crit severity. Engineering consoles, we have the assimilated module. This comes from your Omega reputation. This is uh, probably one of the oldest reputation consoles in the game. Still very useful in the high-end community, or even in the not-so-high-end community. It's a great console to have when you're leveling. As soon as you can unlock this console, which is level one, uh, Omega, level one your Omega reputation, get it and put it on your ship. It's, it's a nice console to help level with. Next up is the flagship tactical computer. This actually comes from this ship. Uh, the reason I'm using this, two things. First off, it's giving me 19% directed energy damage because I'm running beam overload. And secondly, I'm using it for its active ability, fleet weapon acceleration. Team wide plus firing cycle haste, turn and flight speed. 33% firing cycle haste for energy weapons for 15 seconds. And I see 15 seconds is quite a long time. Plus you're getting a nice amount of turn rate strength and a nice amount of flight speed strength. So yeah, that's why we're using that. Next up is Domino. This comes off of the Bajoran Inter Interceptor. This was a, this is a great uh, console to have, Number, uh, especially if you're running phasers, because let's face it, you know, phasers are the most buffed energy weapon type in this game. Nope. Hands down it is. There's no denying it. And since I am running phasers, this, this console is doubly important. First, it's buffing my phaser damage. But it's also giving me 25% firing cycle haste. Remember I talked about that earlier. It's also giving me 25% bonus all damage, which is nice. 25% recharge speed for bridge officer abilities, which is important. And 100% recharge speed for torpedo weapons. So yeah, I'm able to fire out those quantum phase torpedoes very often while this is up. Next up is trajectory, Temporal Trajectory Shifter. This comes from the Narendra and the Voral Support Cruiser. 
in the C-Store. This is also a very, very good beam overload console to run. Its passives are eh, but it's the active that we're using for, the clicky, the borrowed time. It's important to use this on big targets, like gateway, tat cube, etc. Bosses. Weapon firing speed for the enemy is slowed by 33 and 0.3%. Ability cooldown slowed by 1% per second and minus 50 defense rating for, for your enemy. Now to you, you're getting weapon firing spe speed hastened for 50% uh, 50 which is very important for beam overload. We talked about that. Ability cooldowns hastened by 20%, which is nice, and plus 50 defense rating. So yeah, this is a very, very good console to get, so if you're able to get it from the C-Store, I would highly recommend you get it. Next up is the Agony Redistributor. This comes off of the Adamant. Uh, this is one of the most powerful consoles in the game next to DPRM, and you're going to see my max one hit for the ISC coming up is thanks to this console. It's uh, passive is okay, plus 10 inertia rating, which does which helps um, be able to get this ship to stop because it does have a bit of an inertia problem. Gives you some flight speed, which is nice. But it's the active that is the, the showstopper. Reapplies portion of damage dealt in AOE each second for up to 12 seconds. Amounts of hull depleted from target is stored. And basically, it... It takes the amount of damage and just turns it back on the enemy. And you're going to see that, like I said, in the parse explanation coming up. It's the, it is my max one hit. And it is a massive max one hit. This is an excellent, excellent console. Very, very powerful. And if you have, and if you have the adamant, use it. This is a great, like I said, I can't, I can't put this console over enough. The Augie goes crazy over this console. And for good reason. And if Augie thinks it's okay, you know what? It's okay by me. Next up is the Universal Universal Console Emulating Phaser Lance. This comes from the Demos Pilot Escort. This is uh, another very heavy hitting console, and this helps keep this helps proc a Starship trait, which I'm using, which I'll be going over momentarily. This gives a nice amount of phaser damage, again with a big amount of shield, a nice chunk of Starship shield pen. We talked about that, but it's that actual. Phaser Lance that uh, is just so, so powerful. You get six charges of this, and it's just... It's it, it's deadly. It's a big red beam of death. I love this console. So does Augie. And you know, like I said earlier, if Augie puts it over, you know it's good. Another one is the M6 computer from the T3 Temporal Escort. And... This ship costs some dilithium, about 75k dilithium, if I recall correctly. This is another very powerful console to have while leveling and for endgame builds, for high-end builds, as well as just builds in general. I would highly recommend you get this if you get the chance. It is giving you plus 15% bonus all damage for 15 seconds, plus 25% cooldown reduction for on tactical bridge officer abilities, Again, more firing cycle haste, which is also important for beam overload. Here's an accuracy. I mean, accuracy is good because you, you got to be able to hit the target if you want to kill it, right? And some defense. Maybe you got to be able to defend yourself. But, uh, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's that those first three items is what makes it such a good console. And for tactical consoles, I am running three of the vulnerability locators as well as one exploiter because I ha had a very large amount of crit chance I want to buff up my crit severity a bit so that's why I threw in an uh, exploiter just for kicks. My ship does come equipped with a hangar bay and I am using the Elite Alliance fighter squadrons from the Jurok carrier which was the anniversary ship. These are very very good hangar pets. They have uh, both and they're using anti-proton beam arrays as well as pulse cannons, but it's at Focused Assault 3, which makes these things just oh so deadly. 
and you get 240% bonus damage from that. It's it's it, it's insane. These are incredibly good fighters that they gave us for free. So if you out highly, if you have the drop carrier and you have a chance to use these, use them. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about my skills real quick. Again, I'm using Intel Primary, Temporal Operative Secondary, no surprise there. Skill tree, the same skill tree I always run. So if you'd like to pause the video now, take a screenshot. If you'd like to use this setup, go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on. Traits. First off, we're using adapt uh, Adaptive Offense. A good day to die. I mean, if you're a tactical captain and you're not using good day to die, what's wrong with you? Now stop the video right now and go buy it. This uh, this turns your go down fighting into a reusable buff. This is uh this was this is also important for tactical captains. Next up, I have operative for the additional crit chance and crit severity. Unconventional systems. This is the unsung hero of this build. This particular trait: control bridge officer abilities reduce universal console recharge. So. As you can see here, here is my Uncon Prox. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. These are all considered control abilities, and thus Uncon Prox. So, the more I'm able to activate these, the more I'm able to get my Universal Consoles on cooldown. That's what makes Unconventional Systems so, so important. It is free DPS. Augie did a whole build video on this. Next up, Inspirational Leader. For a chance to buff starship skills, intelligence agent attache on weapon critical strike, which are 2% of captain ability recharge. This helps me get my tactical fleet up and all that other stuff. Self modulating fire, shield pen, enough said. Superior beam training. Uh, everyone gets standard beam training, which is a flat 5%. You can unlock. Superior beam training at your K-13 fleet halting for, I think, 100,000 fleet credits, if I'm not mistaken. And it buffs it up to 7.5. Next up, Terran targeting systems. Crit severity. That's all I can really say. And last but not least, we have the Boimler effect. This is effectively replaced Ox to Bat. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong, Ox to Bat is still very, very useful, but... By, by getting this, you are effectively uh, freeing up three duty officer slots for some for something that's going to give you a little more offense, as well as two bridge officer slots. So yeah, this is very important to use. And I know several content several streamers have given this away on stream. So I would you know if you have the chance, get it. So it, it's very important. And it's 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 worth 200 lobby that it costs. It, it pays for itself. Next up, we have starship traits. I'm using Calm Before the Storm. This comes from the Cardassian flight deck cruiser. This is a sea store trait. It is firing cycle haste. This is emergency weapon cycle. Again, Firing Cycle Haste and Weapon Power Cost. This comes from the Arbiter, Morgu, or Kurak. Next up, we have Super Weapon Ingenuity. This this still fries me a little bit, but I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, this comes from the Adaleth Dreadnought. It's a lobby ship. And basically, this is the Beam Overload Extension trait. Overpowered and Overgunned. This is from the Legendary Defiant. Firing cycle haste and a good amount of, and it also uh, lowers your weapon power cost. Preferential targeting. This comes from the legendary NX or the NX refit. After using beam fire at will or can scatter volley, 100% damage to beam overload. 
last but not least, Terran goodbye for some for the extra crit chance. Space reputation. I am using magnified firepower from the gamma rep. Advanced targeting from the Dyson rep. Controlled countermeasures from your temporal rep. Tyler's duality. Uh, this is uh, what. Uh, Basically, you're getting extra kit chance based on your hull capacity. So, I have, like I said, I showed you some consoles that buffed hull capacity that I'm using. That feeds into this to give me the extra kit chance. This is Discovery Rep, by the way, if you didn't already know. And last but not least, we have Precision, a little bit of extra kit chance. All right, moving along to Duty Officers. We have the twins here for the beam over, for the buff to shield pan on use of beam overload. We have projectile weapon officer for stacking crit chance on firing projectiles. We have 2447. Basically on use of tactical abilities, 15% chance, set power levels to maximum for 5 seconds. This does proc quite often. And on miracle work, use of miracle worker abilities, which I am using. 30% chance to improve crit chance by 2.5% for 30 seconds. And yeah, these, like I said, these prop quite often. Next up, I have 42 of 47. On use of tactical abilities, 15% chance to reduce Intel Bridge Officer ability cooldowns by 50%. And on the use of Intel abilities, 30% chance to reduce tactical bridge officer cooldown by 50%. And I do have one Intel ability here, so that's where this comes in. And last but not least, we have 39 of 47. On use of tactical abilities, 15% chance to reduce Miracle Worker Bridge Officer ability cooldowns by 50%. And on use of Miracle Worker, 30% chance to reduce tactical. Let's go ahead and uh, look at bridge officer stations, last but not least. All right. Basically, we have three controls right here. Tractor beam, scramble sensors, and gravity well. These feed into unconventional systems. We have chemocyte laced weaponry, which helps buff the damage of the dark matter quantums. Torpedo spread to get those dark matter quantum torpedoes spread around. Uh, the main event, Beam Overload 3. There's that in, uh, Intel ability I was talking about. This is a control, considered a control ability. That's why we're using it. And sc can Scatter Volley, which helps proc preferential targeting, as well as helps proc Mixed Armament Synergy, which I'll be going over here real soon. Um, emergency Power to Weapons to help proc Emergency Weapon Cycle. Un emit, emit unstable warp bubble. This comes from the broken circle mission. This is uh, considered and an, this is one of the, one of two engineering control abilities. That's why I'm using it. I'm using it to proc unconventional systems. Narrow sensor bands for 10 seconds. 50% 50% to 20% bonus energy weapon damage decreases with distance from target up to six kilometers. So the closer you get, the more damage you're going to the more extra damage you're going to get. That's why you see me face-hugging the enemy as much as I can. Mix arm and synergies. Activating a beam, cannon, mine, or torpedo will cause you to gain 50% bonus all damage for the other three types of energy weapons. Or the other type, three type, other weapons, pardon me. These two are probably the most useful of the Miracle Worker Bridge Officer abilities. They are quite powerful, and when paired together, it's just absolute chaos. And last, we are using jam targeting sensors. Again, considered a control ability, and it feeds into unconventional systems. All right, so sit tight. The ISE demo is coming up shortly. And afterwards, we'll talk about the parse for that run. So until then, I'll catch you on the flip side.
welcome back from that ISC. And that was a hell of an ISC. Those Borg never stood a chance. They never knew what hit them. Alright, as always, I am at James Bryce. And in this particular run, my beam overload Terran Lexington did 577.7k DPS. That is well and above what I expected to get. I am very, very happy with that number. Also along for the ride was Mikey213, also known as Mad Dog Mikey over on YouTube. Do me a favor, would you please? Go on over to his channel, smash that subscribe button like it owes you money, and ring the bell. That way you guys get notified when Mikey drops more of his awesome content. He's a fellow content creator. He's one of my tanking students, and he is just an all-around great guy. So go and give him some love. Mikey was running control for me tonight, and he pulled 431.1k. Well done, Mikey. Next up, we have at Lord Ice. He was our tank for the run. He came in at 148.4k. He is both mine and Mikey's tanking student. He is uh, exceeding our expectations well and above the mark. Keep up the great work, Lord Ice. He pulled in 80%. Attacks in, 80% damage in. Well done. Also along for the ride was at J.K. Bennett, also known as Emma. Moran was running DPS and pulled 96.7k. Well done. And last but certainly not least, I have at Taylin. Taylin pulled 76... Just a little, just a hair over 76k. And that is in a T5 ship Tan was messing with. It was the uh, T5 Olympus, I believe. It was just a fun run. She wanted to see what she can do with that ship. And, well, here's the result. It did very good. And, you know, it was a little bit tinkering. Tay, you can get that uh, above the 100k mark if you so chose. And, you know, my door's always open. If you want advice, you know that. But, regardless, well done to everybody. Let's go ahead and look at my player combat analysis. All right. Max one hit for this run was 1.375 million. This is the end result of the Agony Redistributor, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, that, yeah, that, that it's ridiculous. That console's ridiculous. It does ridiculous things. And it is counted under pets, so let's look at that. And get that out of the way. Here it is. Tactical Cube. Max one hit. 1.375. So some poor unsuspecting tact cube really uh, got its ass kicked. Also uh, took a real pounding was the gateway because I know I put it on there. That pulled in a little over a million. Yeah, like I said, that Agony Redistributor, it ain't no joke. My pets did okay, not as well as I would hope, but they still uh, did fairly well for themselves. Alright, let's look at the meat and potatoes here. We have the Phaser Wide Angle Dual Heavy Beam Bank on Overload 3, max 1 hit of 46k. Not bad, not bad. I've seen that hit a little, I've seen that hit higher. Phaser dual beam bank. This is the agony phaser. I've seen this do a little bit higher, but still well enough on its own. Uh, cannons did okay. Got a nice hit from the agony omni. Got a nice, fairly decent hit from the uh, terlithium omni. Kinetic cutting beam. Eh, it is what it is. Keep in sight. Did fifty three. Did uh, just about. 53.5k, that's not bad. Can't complain with that. Max 1 hit under tor under spread 2 for the Dark Matter Quantum, 171. Not bad at all. Emblazing Phaser Lance did 308k. Now, it's an uh, important note. As you probably noticed in the build video, I was not running unconventional uh, universal designs in this run. I chose to slot Terran Goodbye instead. Now... Had I had decided to run the Universal Designs trait, I would have seen a much, much bigger boost from this weapon. 
is capable of a much higher max one hit. But like I said, for this particular run, this particular build, I chose not to run it. Now I may swap that out for Universal Designs and test this again just to see what it looks like. I'll have to see how that goes. But yeah. That's important to know for this. Immolating phase of lance fuels Universal Designs. It keeps it up uh, pretty much the whole run. But like I said, I decided not to run it for this run just for uh, something different. And, you know, I probably would have gotten higher DPS. But I'm happy with the end result in any circumstance. Terran Task Force dual heavy phaser cannons on their own. Not bad. So, yeah, the uh, Entropic Rider did okay. No, no, it's all right, I guess. But still. And here is your Agony Evaser. Disable and damage over time. Eh, like I said, if I was running all Agonies, this would probably be better. But since I only had the one, no, well, only had two technically. It did all right. I'm not disappointed. So, yeah. Overall, this is a very, very successful build. This is a very powerful build. I am very happy with it in the end run. And for all you people out there who are flying the Terran Lexington and are uh, and do have beam overload builds, you know, I'd kind of like to hear about your experience. Please comment and discuss in the comment section of this video. I'd love to hear your experience with it. If you have suggestions for mine, please let me know. Do you like this video? Am I doing a good job? Do you, do you want to see? Do you want to see a certain type of build? Comment in the comment section below. Let me know. I'll be more than happy to do a, uh, a particular build for you if you so choose. All right. With well, that being said, you know the drill. All the typical YouTube things. Like, so, you know, if you like this video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button like it owes you money, ring the bell so you guys are notified when I drop more of my great content. You guys know the drill. I hate talking about it, but, you know, you, got to, you just got to do it. You know, it helps YouTube uh, realize that I'm here and I exist. And it also helps the algorithm. So, like I said, please do those. And as always, don't go by the book. Think like a pirate, and I'll catch you next time. Human! Play, damn jet! Human!